I am Anil Kumar. In this video, we will learn how to sketch graph of sin square x. To begin with, we will take critical points for sin x function and then square that those values to sketch the graph for sin square x. So that is the whole idea. You can make a table like this, take some values of x. Uh, let's start with the 0 degrees and then we can add some standard values for 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees and repeat them, right? So that is quadrant 1 and then in quadrant 2, we know these values are going to be repeated. So let's write down what is sine of x. For 0, we know it is 0. You can also make a special triangle if you don't remember the values. Uh, that's the special triangle. Two of them, one for 45 degrees, the other one for 30, 60 and 90 degrees. So for 45 degrees, you know, the value is square root 2 for hypotenuse. That is for 45 degrees. So 1 over square root 2. For 60, 30 and 90 degrees, we have 1, 2, square root 3 as a triangle, correct? So for 30 degrees, it is half. For 45, it is 1 over square root 2. For 60 degrees, it is going to be square root 3 over 2. And for 90 degrees, it is 1. Now, we have to repeat these values in quadrant 2. So the next angle will be 90 plus 30, which is 120 degrees. And then you can add 45, which is 135 degrees. And then you can add 60. So that gives you 150 degrees. And then 180 degrees, right? Now all these are positive values. So for 30 degrees, again, as you can see, the sine curve is very symmetric. You can fill up these values and then draw the sine function. I'm leaving this for you to do. I'll continue with sine square x. So when I say sine square x, it really means you have to just square these values. So what you notice is Square of 0 is going to be 0, square of 1 is going to be 1. And all these values are less than 1, and therefore their square is going to be lesser, right? So it would be like 1 over 4, 1 over 2, 3 over 4, correct? Now, based on that, we can actually sketch the sine function, right? So let's sketch the sine function. So let me make a horizontal x-axis here. Uh, we'll go from 0 onwards. Let's say this. Let me draw a dotted line to indicate uh, 1, the maximum value, right? I will actually reduce the scale a bit so that I could have at least one cycle. So the way I do is like this. For sine function, I'm going to sketch one wave. Let's say we'll just go up go down to minus 1 kind of like this right so and you know it's a periodic function so it has to repeat now from the time period we know that much should be 360 degrees this is 180 degrees the maximum of 1 happens to be at 90 degrees now, for 45 degrees, it is, let's say this is 45 degrees, and let's say this point here is slightly over half, right? Okay. So, for 45 degrees, it is 1 over square root 2. So, we'll put this point here as 1 over square root 2. And the value of half is 
is at 30 degrees let's say this is the value of half right let us see correct so what you notice here is that the values are symmetric right it's an odd function as you know and therefore you can know that as you go down the values repeat in this fashion do you see that so we could actually repeat these values after 1 it is square root 3 over 2 1 over square root 2 half and then again 0 these are all positive and after this we get the negative values correct so that becomes the graph for uh, sin x so let me write down sin x here now to get the graph of sin square x you have to just square these values so you notice that these points do not change the negative will become positive right so this point will get reflected and it will come on this side so negative becomes positive so all are positive so this portion becomes positive now since we are doing square of half it becomes one fourth so what will really happen is that the the values will be kind of lower in this portion right so so normally the graph will be let me just make a better graph here like this right so if you are sketching the sine graph we'll find that all these values are kind of lower becoming same at 0 and 1 right so so the graph will be kind of like this you see that so it is lower so that is kind of important to understand and uh, kind of like this so the sine square x graph let me write sine square x will be a bit lower than the sine x graph however the maximum will be plus one and you will not see any negative values right so so you get a graph like this okay so it's not that accurate however if you draw on a graph paper that is how it is going to look like so so in quadrant three and four so i'll just place values for first two quadrants as you can see quadrant three and four will be negative right so this is 270 but for square all will be positive as shown here so i hope that is absolutely clear now you can follow the same method and sketch the graph for cos square x. So I'll suggest make a table of values as we had. So take some values for x and then let me again make this table. We can make a smaller one this time. Okay. So, so again follow the same thing. Write down the values of cos x then cos square x right uh, for 0 cos x is 1 so cos square x will be 1 correct and for 30 degrees 60 degrees 90 degrees so that is quadrant 1 right then we'll go on with 120 degrees 135 degrees 150 degrees and 180 degrees right so that is going to be quadrant 2 now then we'll repeat right so we'll repeat with cos that becomes uh, it's an even function so we could repeat all these values once you get these values let me write them down so for 30 it is square root 3 over 2 for 60 it is half uh, I missed 45 anyway and for, this is 0, right? So for 45, it is 1 over square root 2, correct? So as you go in this direction, what you find really is that for cos function, the graph is going to look like this. Let me sketch. Let's say this is 1 maximum value. Cos starts with the maximum, right? So you could start like this. Uh, 
okay and similar to what you saw in the sine function we'll have these as exactly same points this reflects because square is always positive now since square is always positive this portion will be reflected uh, here you have these common points that reflects so the cos function will be coming down here then moving up a bit lower than the normal that's what I'm trying to say uh, if you sketch the cos function right so uh, that's how it is going to be right so you could repeat it after that so I hope you get an idea that for the square always the values are going to be positive so I've shown cos square x in dark blue so from here you can clearly see that the values become zero for 90 degrees and then for 180 degrees this is uh, one cycle of cos uh, 360 degrees that is 270 okay 180 degrees okay so so what you notice here is that for the cosine function the values are maximum for 180 and 0 it actually rises and falls as shown here right so so once it hits the 0 it again starts rising and then you can actually write these values as half 1 over square root 2 square root 3 over 2 but these values for cos x are negative right they are negative and negative 1 when you square them they all become positive as shown here right so the values for cos square x will be 3 over 4 1 over 2 1 over 4 and 0 and in this case plus 1 over 4 1 over 2 3 over 4 and 1 right and then you can repeat these values as shown here but I hope you understand the basic concept so that is how you could draw uh, the graph for sin square x and cos square x feel free to write your comments share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great thanks for watching and all the best